Jace Tunnel here. Oh man, I'm excited to talk to y'all today about something. Goose barnacles. And we've got a lot of stuff washing up. Uh, I mean, almost anything you can think of washing up right now has these goose barnacles on, barnacles on it. Um, they're also called gooseneck barnacles. Now there are a couple of different types of barnacles that you'll see washed up. Um, like the acorn barnacle, you know, we talk about that sometimes on here. Um, uh, but this, this is a gooseneck barnacle and they look very different. Now, one of the things that you're going to be, um, uh, and okay, let's talk about why they are called goose barnacles. Because some of these, they grow in colonies and the, the stalk, the peduncle uh, that these are attached to actually looks like a gooseneck. And so that's where it gets its name. Now, these look like clams. So a lot of people would think that they are a mollusk, but they're actually not. They are a crustacean. And so they actually have an animal living inside of these uh, moving plates. And so I've got some footage that I'm gonna show you where one of these logs had washed up and you know, to pop these off, you basically pull on it. Boom, you can see right there, you can see the peduncle. And then if I open this up, you'd be able to see the animal inside. But I'll show you the crustacean. So if you ever see these when they first wash up, the animal will actually be on the outside of it and it will look like fingers coming out. Those are actually its legs. So the animal lives in there upside down. So it has its legs coming out and then its mouth is right below that. And I'll get some close up uh, shots of that, but they are filter feeders. So they're filtering out, you know, plankton and stuff out of the water. Now crustaceans, you might know more of like a lobster, crab, a shrimp. So these are uh, very much related, uh, since they are a crustacean, to those other animals that you might be more familiar with. Now these can live on rocks uh, in an intertidal zone. How we find them a lot here is by floating up. So this log right here is full of goose barnacles all over it. Um, but here's a stick I picked up. Look at that all over the stick on various spots on it uh, plastic here's a chunk of plastic and we've got goose barnacles growing on there uh, here's a sea bean so you know normally i like to find sea beans and stuff well this one's got uh, goose barnacles on it and then i found one that was just washing up in the high tide line on a piece of wood and there's a bunch of little ones all over there so I'll get a close-up of that so you can see how they feed. But this one is actually coming out and uh, the legs are coming out and feeding on, uh, trying to feed on plankton that's in the water column. Now I mentioned before, this stalk that's on here is, is called a peduncle. It actually has a gland on there and that, that secretes a sticky adhesive, like glue basically, which allows it to stick whenever it's young and um, I mean, I mean, really young, like 30 days old, you know, they're really free floating uh, little animals when they're first hatched for about 30 days. And then uh, they have this adhesive gland that allows them to stick on something. These barnacles are hermaphrodites. So they produce both egg and sperm, but they don't self fertilize. So you'll see that they're in colonies and stuff. And so that's what helps them uh, be able to fertilize, uh, to be able to have their eggs and they mature in one to three years. So by three years, they are already having babies. And uh, peak spawning season is in the summer around July. And each individual can have, I mean, 950,000 embryos. That's per adult. That's, I mean, almost a million embryos. That's pretty crazy. And so look how many are on this log right here. That is a lot of eggs. Now these are brewed for about three weeks. Uh, then they're hatched and they're released in the open ocean and floating around. And that's why they have so many, because you know that there's fish out there that are feeding on these. Now, like I said earlier, uh, after about 30 days uh, of floating around as a, a, a baby, they, they start attaching to something hard. And that's when they start, uh, you know, growing their gooseneck and start filter feeding and growing in these colonies like this. Whenever it washes up, and like I'm looking at this one right here, a lot of these, there are some that are still in here on this log, but birds 
feed on these like crazy. Uh, ruddy turnstones, sanderlings, uh, laughing gulls, uh, oyster catchers. You know, there's a lot of different bird species that whenever this stuff washes up, it's like free food for them. So they're going out there and just eating these things up. That's why you want to look for them if it's actually uh, floating in the water or had just washed up. That's when you'll find them alive. Now I've even seen some of these barnacles growing on top of other barnacles. So that tells you they really just find something hard to attach to and they start growing. Now, last but not least, I know y'all are wondering, do people eat these? And the answer is yes, there are countries that eat these. And so they can take the shell off, they take the legs off and the meaty tissue they can eat, and especially the stalk. So the peed uncle, uh, yummy, yummy, yummy. They uh, end up boiling this stuff in salt water to be able to keep its uh, flavor and everything. But it's served whole. And uh, I don't know, if y'all are feeling adventurous, come out and get you some and boil them up. All right, that's it for this episode of Beachcoming. We'll hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.